Hello everyone, Chris Assis here, and today we will wrap up our um, our video package on cross, uh, on the cross step, and uh, we will gently transition into what we're going to be working on for the next couple of weeks, which is uh, change of speed. Uh, this came from one of the subscribers of uh, Bautans.com. Uh, so as a follower, that was the question, as a follower, how can I speed up smoothly without affecting my partner? So um, I will do my best <laughs> to, to, to show through video how you can practice that and um, uh, not only going fast, but also how we can slow down, how we can stop, how we can start, and uh, generally all the transitions. So not just this reaching the speed, but also slowing down. Um, that is to say that if you have a question, if you have been having any tango trouble, send me an email and uh, I will do my best to put that into, um, to put some thought into it and create videos for it. Uh, because your trouble, it's highly likely that it is shared by other tango dancers out there. So by asking a question, you're helping out many, many other people. So send me your questions and uh, I will do my best to answer them through a video or more videos. So with no further ado, here we go. So we're, we want to use any squishy ball that you might have around um, and just extend and bend similarly to what you would do if you were about to step forward. What we are looking for here is a relaxed body and a relaxed leg inside the hip. So, of course, there is some muscle work happening, but it shouldn't. you shouldn't be feeling your psoas, um, which is the little muscle inside your hip. The hip joint should be completely relaxed. If you feel any tension there, try as much as you can to let it go. Maybe you want to go a little bit slower than what I'm doing. Um, maybe um, you might not be able to see it, but the standing, my standing knee is bending and stretching here. You want to allow that to happen. Um, so do whatever you can to be relaxed. You can hold on to a bar or the wall. And when you're done with going forward, you do exactly the same thing going backwards. And here the control the, over the ball might be a little bit more challenging, but that's okay. You want to feel that you're as if you're going into a back step. So that's why you see the gentle swing in my arms. This actually does happen when you step forward or backwards. The gentle bend in my knee. You might not be able to see that, but it does happen. And um, my body, you know, just casually twisting to allow for that um, for that extension to happen. I make sure that I'm not uh, overusing the lower back. Some extension will happen in the spine. Of course, you can you can see that, but um, I am not overarching. So I'm trying to be. Um, very much aware of what the whole body is doing to um, as a as as I'm doing this movement. So it's not only the leg doing the work; it is uh, the whole body uh, participating into this and enjoying <laughs> enjoying the movement. Now, what happens in the foot? Notice that my foot is not straight in front of me, but it's slightly open. So not straight but slightly open for a relaxed hip. This is important for a relaxed hip. And as I'm rolling out, the ball, the foot, I'm ending up on the outside, the outer part of the foot. This is exactly what happens. This is where we end up when we step forward. So the first part of the foot to receive our weight is the outer part. And that's why it has more cushion compared to the inner part, the arch. The arch has literally almost like no cushion. So this is what we are practicing here, the articulation of the foot. 
um, the articulation of the movement over on, on the foot. So when we shift the weight going forward, the our weight will travel from the outer part of our foot to the inner part. The reverse happens when we go backwards. So when you're gonna go backwards, you're gonna end up on the inner part of your foot. Now, don't exaggerate, just let, see how naturally my toes just roll over the ball? So you're not gonna end up over your baby toe. You're not gonna go overboard like I'm doing here and really uh, end up over and press over the big toe. You're just going to gently allow for the ball to roll towards the big toe. So this is all for a healthy, a healthy um, backward walk, a walk that will allow you to free up the hips, that will allow you to uh, free yourself up from any knee uh, or ankle or foot pain, and that will allow you to become more um, creative when you don't have to worry about all these technical things uh, or other technical things such as balance because all will be resolved with a more efficient um, way of walking. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to walk. So after you do this little exercise, you can do this for as long as, you can do the ball exercise for as long as you want. Uh, take a moment to walk, be, being very aware of what we just talked about. And when you start feeling comfortable, you can go a little bit faster, like I'm doing. And maybe a little bit faster. And maybe a little bit faster. So you can go all the way up to, you know, a little jog and then go slow and see what happens when you change from one speed to another. But really keep your mind on your feet. Notice how the outer part of the foot is receiving the weight and then you're rolling not only forward but towards the inside. So, uh, and again play with the speeds, but try not to let the speed affect that um, affect that awareness, that awareness that you have over your feet. And just notice, where do you need to have your body for that change of speed to be smooth, comfortable, and efficient? And of course, after a few repetitions, you walk backwards and you do exactly the same thing, taking your mind to the feet, noticing how the big toe uh, will come down first. You can't, you can't go uh, over the baby toe because you're, you're going to break your foot. But again, as we roll back, our full weight is received on the outside of the foot and then rolling towards the inside to push our way backwards. So that's a very interesting transition. And uh, even if you are a leader and you, you think, oh, well, I'm not stepping back all that much, it is good to practice it. And of course, you speed up. Make sure you don't look down like me because I experienced a little bit severe dizziness afterwards. <laughs> uh, you can see its effects right here. So don't look down and change the speed, um, go super slow, and then you can start speeding up again, especially if you have a narrow space like I have here. It's rather long, but it's a little bit narrow, this studio. Um, beautiful floors, though. Um, you will feel the the you feel a force towards the center of your circle whichever circle you are creating try to respect that force as you are speeding up that's very important and when i say respected i mean respected with the shape of your body so as if you notice here i'm not square i am 
just in a slight side bend, especially when I'm speeding up. Just an extra hint. So, take a moment. I'm going to take a moment to show you how the forward step's happening. So, if we imagine the ball was there, this is what we practice on extending and bringing the ball in, extending and step. That's why I said before, this is exactly what happens with your steps. So imagine that you have a little ball under your foot and you're rolling it out just before you step. And so just to sum everything up uh, that we've been doing the last couple of weeks, uh, I've put a little sequence for us together to two steps and a cross, and uh, another two steps and another cross. And um, in the beginning, I'm going really slow, just so I can internalize all these things that we were talking about, the, the free hips, moving, moving from the psoas and not moving from the quads that we usually tend to walk from. Uh, allowing for that roll to happen from the outer part of the foot to the inner part, vice versa if you're walking backwards. And same thing in the in the crosses, how we roll, how we allow for a slight rotation in the body to happen, how um, how the upper body is staying relaxed, but um, not relaxed in a, you know, um, just enjoying the trip type of way, but uh, uh, relax through movement, participating and uh, becoming almost like the, the breath and uh, the connecting point for the movement. So all of these things put together in this little routine, um, nothing special, feel free to change it up. Uh, I just thought that this is a good routine that will allow us to work on all of these things without having to think too much about the footwork itself, uh, the sequence itself. And a nice bridge to make our way to what we will be working on the next set of videos. Try to make this routine faster. And notice how your body can help you go faster. You can try. I'm not going to give you any tips yet. You can observe me and try to see what I'm doing. Uh, or, which I would mostly recommend, try things out for yourselves. Where, in which position, which position is best for the body? More forward, more, um, more backward, more upwards, more downwards what works best? What do you think?